All right, y'all, I got bags. What I did was I actually went to a neighborhood that I haven't been to before, and it was more of a working class neighborhood. It was one where I've driven through it. I knew that there were a couple of thrift stores there, but I actually hadn't had time to go check them out yet. So I went there and I was actually really, really impressed. Now, one of the things that I noticed was it didn't really seem that people were really looking for the kind of stuff that I look for there. So in this video, I'm gonna go over what I got at the two thrift stores I went to yesterday. But first, let me just kind of go through my listing pile. I think I've got like roughly 15 to 20 items that are ready to list. And let me just show you what I'm actually going to do as soon as I finish this video. Whoa, got stuff. So the first item is this pair of corduroy, green corduroy cargo Vans pants. Generally, I actually have stopped picking up Vans unless it's very unique, but because of the style of this, and this kind of style overall is pretty trendy right now, even if the brand is not. Obviously, skater people like Vans, but I find that their pants sell really, really slow. Um, and not for all that much, but these are will sell for around 20 to 30. So I was happy to pick them up I just paid a couple bucks. Tommy Bahama is a brand where there's Decent variants within the brand and the sub brands But if you want to find something that will sell for roughly 20 bucks this right over here Tommy Bahama relax just a basic cotton striped Navy blue white polo pocket polo will sell for about 20 bucks Jamaica Jacks is a brand most of their shirts are 100% silk I think some are rayon blends but they make a lot of Hawaiian shirts they don't sell for crazy they sell for maybe 15 to 18 bucks but if you could get them in the one to four dollar range to me that makes sense over here this was a nice one this is I think this is a vintage Tommy Bahama this is a silk and tensile blend and it's got the embroidered label right over there um, right there actually embroidered in rather than a tag this is kind of like a striped I could if I wanted to stretch it I could call it a bowling shirt I would also say bowling shirt is a good keyword for you to know here is another Jamaica Jacks Hawaiian shirt again with Tommy Bahama with the sub brands and also the larger sizes are usually pretty good this is Tommy Bahama Island Zone and it's a 2XL Good size, sub brand, 20 bucks, probably not more. Johnny O is a brand that I have heard amazing things about and have had pretty bad luck with selling. Um, just, it kind of hangs out a lot longer than I expected. Well, this is Johnny O, the sub brand is hanging out. This is a men's XL, plaid cotton button down short sleeve shirt. We'll sell for about 20 bucks. Uh, Peter Millar. You do have to be a bit careful with Peter Millard. This is probably only a $15 shirt just because it's not one of their sub brands like the Cron Crafted or the Summer Comfort. You know, a gingham, check, purple, red, white shirt, 15 bucks. Sort over here, Life is Good. You've seen me mention this brand. Their t-shirts sell for around 15 to 20, give or take. And this is their Crusher T Classic Fit. This is a woman's 2XL and it has a turtle on it with not all who wander are lost. Just very nice, friendly shirt. It also on the back has the life is good icon. And then they usually also over here have a little tag on the outside. Ted Baker. This is uh, Ted Baker. This is a men's size seven, which I think is a US 3XL or a 2XL. I think it's a 3XL, but this is just a purple gingham dress shirt, check plaid. It's not really plaid, it's definitely gingham, but high quality, probably a 20 to $30 shirt. This is a good brand. It's wore out on the label a little bit, Bilt, B-Y-L-T. They also usually, where is it? Have their company name on the bottom. Yeah, right here, this is where it says Bilt on the bottom, on the bottom front. These are, these are workout shirts, they're performance shirts, all of that kind of stuff. This is the Drop Cut V-neck Luxe, probably a $19.99 plus shipping type deal. 
maybe 25. This is a brand where you look at it and you would think, oh, I should not buy that. But this is a brand called Vintage Silk. And generally the rule is if it says vintage on the label, you don't buy it. But this is actually one that I've done really well with. Their shirts sell for around 30 to 50. And especially their Bowen shirts, which I would say that this classifies as. Uh, this has got a little embroidery on it. So generally speaking, it's also 100% silk. I would say if you find this brand, especially their Bowen shirts, it's, a, it's an automatic buy. And you should even be willing to pay up a little bit for that. This is Travis Matthew. Travis Matthew is a brand that is pretty heavily saturated, but this has like the all over print. I'm not sure how well you'd be able to see it, but it's got like little um, beer bottles and um, little party signs and just all of those fun little good time letters, etc. So this is a Pima blend because it has the all over print AOP keyword probably $29.95 plus shipping. And then something like this, which is like a striped speckled print. And I think this one is 100% Pima. This one's probably around $19.95 or $24.95 plus shipping. Orvis is a brand. Um, I probably only would have paid a dollar for this. I probably wouldn't have even paid more, maybe $2. This is a men's 2XL. And this is a plaid button down short sleeve shirt. And just very basic, $14.95 plus shipping. Probably will sell for $10 to $12. Uh, L.L. Bean is a brand that, when the style is right, it's actually worth picking it up, but a lot of their basics aren't. I just thought this was really just a, a good piece, looked good. Probably will sell for around $20. This is just a, a quarter zip with a pocket on the front, kind of a light baby teal blue color. Just a good looking piece of clothing, high quality. And the people who like L.L. Bean, generally like that kind of stuff and with it being golf season something like this will sell pretty well another life is good t-shirt this one says every day is saturday on the front with somebody hammocking and the life is good logo just a nice basic men's xl crusher tee uh, crusher is one of their sub brands for their t-shirts nothing too bad there probably 17.95 plus shipping this is uh, something that i was actually pretty stoked to find this but i don't really think it's going to sell for that much but i just think it's pretty cool so this is a official West Virginia basketball men's pair of shorts. It's from the 2015-2016 season. It's the Nike one. You can see right there it says 2015-2016. Uh, just thought this was cool. It's a men's size 44. Probably will take a long time to sell, but I think it was only $2. So I thought it was cool enough and that if I can help it get from San Diego to whichever person it's supposed to go to, I'm more than happy to do that. All right, so that's my listing pile. And now we get into the next stuff. You'll notice I'm going a little bit quicker today, I'm trying to compress these videos a little bit. So one of the things that will happen when you go to the more local thrift stores is that you're able to directly support a local community and also sometimes they may know the obvious stuff, but they don't know the less obvious stuff. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a pair of Levi's. Now, if you know anything about Levi's, you know that a basic modern pair of Levi's is functionally worthless. You might be able to sell it for 15 bucks on eBay if you're lucky. But if you start getting into the vintage Levi's, that's where it starts to get interesting. Now, this pair is missing the tag on the back, but obviously it's got the red tab right over there. It's a pair of button fly Levi's. It's a little bit of a bigger size. And most importantly, when you look at the tag, and if you know Levi's, you already know where this is going. This is made in the USA. So this is a also on the back. You can see this is a 42 by 36. A little bit of a bigger size. It's a 501. Made in the USA. Button fly. These are probably somewhere between a $40 to $80 pair of jeans. The store had them. All of their clothes, also because it was a local store, they just had a big markdown. All their clothes were half off. So they had them marked at $14, but they actually were $7. Again, these will sell for somewhere in the $40 to $80 range. I don't think they'll sell for more than $80. If you were really patient, you probably could. But in terms of Levi's and vintage Levi's, this is exactly what you're looking for. And again, 
all of the tags on these were half off and I'll tell you when I switched to the other store. This is John Barbados quality Nordstrom brand. This is just a men's 17 long super fine cotton vertical stripe dress shirt. Nothing too crazy. Good brand probably will sell for around 30 bucks and I got it for five. So when it comes to Hawaiian shirts, there are a lot of them. And this is one that I would recommend keeping an eye out for. This is a brand called Paradise Found. It's a men's 2XL Hawaiian shirt. I don't think it's silk, um, but it's just like it, these are genuine vintage. They are older. And in fact, let me check. Yeah, these are definitely older because they're single stitch. And generally these go for around 40 bucks. And I got it for seven. This is Wrangler All Terrain Gear or Wrangler ATG. Let's see on the back there. This is a Pearl Snap Western shirt. It's also vented. You could probably say Western fishing shirt if you were adventurous and get away with it because it's vented. It's got double breast pockets. So these, I was a little bit surprised that these sold as poorly as they do. Uh, my expectation is that I'll maybe get 15 to 20 for this, but since it was three bucks and it has so many keywords stacked on top of it, I was like, let me just, it's only $3. Now, this is what I was saying before. The same way with the Levi's, because it was just like a like a local thrift shop that they just had a ton of stuff that they just threw on the racks, but they didn't really know the difference between stuff. They had a ton of Ralph Lauren stuff that they had marked up at like, 12 13 14 dollars and half off was maybe six to eight dollars the thing is though what they did not know is this now if you know ralph loren you already know what this is they had this marked at 12 dollars it was half off it was only six dollars this is a ralph loren purple label so in the hierarchy of ralph loren brands the lowest is chaps then you have like Lauren Ralph Lauren, then you might have like Denim and Supply and Rugby University. They're all kind of in that range. Then you have Polar Ralph Lauren, then you have Ralph Lauren Blue Label, which just says Ralph Lauren, but it's on a blue label. And then their highest and most expensive tier is Ralph Lauren Purple Label. So while I skipped on a bunch of the shirts, I immediately bought this. I didn't comp it. I didn't do anything. I saw the purple label and I bought it. So... That is something when you're going to these stores, a lot of the people don't know the distinctions between these different brands. They don't know that a made in the USA pair of Levi's is significantly more valuable than uh, just a regular pair of Levi's. They just mark all Levi's at 10 to 20, 10 to $15. They don't know the difference between a, a modern Ralph Lauren label and a purple Ralph Lauren label. Or if they do, they don't price it that way because this was actually cheaper than some of the other Ralph Lauren shirts. So this is just something where if you actually know what you're doing, you can really find opportunities. I would expect that this will sell for about 60 to 80. Again, I have not comped this yet. So if you think that's low and you think I can get closer to 120, yell at me in the comments and tell me to list it for more. And I believe you 100%. But by the time you see this video, this will probably already be comped and listed. And if it needs to be higher, it will be. And then last, and I don't know if I'd say, but not least, um, but last, these are two pairs of men's 2XL Untucked shirts. It's a good size. Untucked is a brand that I've sold a couple of times, but I kind of steer clear for. It's gotten really saturated. There's a lot of new Untucked on the second on the secondary market, but this one was only four dollars. Nice dress shirt, uh, kind of vertical stripe with some orange and blues on it and then this one was kind of like a check plaid green one this one was six dollars so you know average five dollars each these will sell for around maybe either 19.95 24.95 i'll probably list them at 24.95 and then just sell and send an offer at like 19.95 or 21 or something like that but it's a brand that I'm a little less excited about, but I do know that a lot of people do sell it really well, but it just hasn't ever really been great for me personally. But if you sell it well, that's awesome. And again, with it being the bigger size, if that was like a medium or small, I would not have bought it even at that price. All right, store number two. So this was actually just around the corner and it was 
a store that I haven't been to. They have a couple other locations, but I just hadn't been to this location. And I got this shirt for $2.95. It's called Duchamp. Duchamp London. These shirts sell for around $30. And this is a medium. So, just a nice lavender dress shirt. High quality. Can't go wrong with that. This is another one that was inexpensive enough for me to buy. I paid $3.95 for it. The brand is Gant, but it's their Salty Dog sub brand. Let me make sure that's shown. Yeah. I've sold this specific, not this style, but the Gant Salty Dog before. And it sold decently well and quicker than I expected. So at four bucks, I picked it up. I think this will sell for around 20 to 30. Nice style. Nice shirt. Uh, this one was new to me, going back to the Hawaiian shirts. This is a brand called Aloha Republic, and this was a men's 3XL. It's definitely a vintage tag, and just like a big, loud style. So, I paid $3.95 for it. It's definitely cotton, which I usually prefer to stay away from for Hawaiian shirts, but it looked like it was selling for around 30 So, at 4 bucks, why not? This was a fun find. So, I paid $9 for this, $8.95. And this is in Juventus' official jersey. Uh, Juventus, the, soccer, the German soccer team. Uh, Ronaldo played there for a little bit. This doesn't have any specific player on it. It doesn't have any, any number on it. But this is an official license Juventus jersey. I saw that these were going online for somewhere between 40 to 120, depending on the style. I need to do a little bit more research on this specific style, but I definitely think I'll get around. 40 to 80 for that. Work rare. This is a brand called Big Mac Authentic Workwear. It's like a full body jump shot, jump jumpsuit, coveralls type of situation. And I got this for $15. I saw that these were selling for around 40 to 80, depending, maybe a little bit higher, maybe it was like 40 to 100. Um, not the fastest seller, but this is a little bit of a bigger size. It's very specialized technical gear. I don't think that it's fire resistant. No, it, it would say it. So it's not fire resistant, but um, if you, this is also a brand beyond like this specific style. But if you see that Big Mac workwear, I would recommend picking it up. Um, I was looking at some of the other comps and some of their shirts and stuff like that can go for around 40 Pre-owned Tommy Bahama can maybe, like their silk Hawaiian shirts can only go for 15 to 20 bucks. This, which is a men's medium, is new with tags. And this will likely go for around 40 to 60 bucks. There's not much more to say to that. It's just kind of like a ribbed Hawaiian shirt with a little bit of a palm design on it. We talked about this brand before. This is Vintage Silk. This is one of their Hawaiian shirts. Their Hawaiian shirts don't sell as well as their bowling shirts. Probably 25 now this was an interesting one. This is I got this for nine dollars each. There's two of them. I'll show the other one in a second. This is a brand called Wa Maker, W A H Maker, and it looked like it was maybe for like just on on a real quick look. They're selling for around forty each, but it looked like it was for either like. Kind of like Amish or homesteader or maybe people who are doing um, reenactment type stuff of of like homesteading era type styles of life. It's not really Western wear from what I saw, but it is more like kind of like an Amish homesteader type of wear. Um, these are selling. It had close to 200% sell through rate. There was like 120 of them listed and like over 200 of them sold in the past 90 days. So. At nine bucks, selling it for forty with that fast sell through rate, more than happy to. Here's the other one if you wanted to take a look at the style. And it, it doesn't really have like a full collar. It's you you'll probably recognize that style. And we're almost done, just two items left. Now 
remember how I said that sometimes when you go to these stores, the people who are pricing things just genuinely don't know what they're doing. They'll price every single Adidas, Nike, um, Callaway, whatever else item, they'll price it five, ten. But then they do stuff like this, where they price an item for two ninety five. This is new with tags, John Barbados. It says right there, retail for sixty eight dollars. Short sleeve Henley, easy forty bucks. I have no idea why that was two ninety five, but I knew that when I saw that that I was in for a good day because whoever had been doing the pricing there. Um, did not know what they were doing, and on top of that, um, whoever else had been going through the rack, because I was there on a Friday, so like that stuff had been there all week. So whoever else had been going through the racks had no idea what they were doing, and it was probably a store that was frequented by a lot of vintage people, but not people who really knew much about modern. Um, this last one, I'm actually horrendously disappointed about because I'm not going to end up listing it. Uh, because it's not sure if you can see there is a pretty large hole right there. If you think I should list this, let me know. I'll wait until this video publishes and if you think I should list this one, tell me what you think. This is a vintage Nike Golf. You can tell by the tag that this is genuinely vintage. It's kind of like a beige speckle print. Uh, Two-tone polo. It's got the Nike over there. What do you think? Should I just list it and disclose that it's got some holes on the neckline? Looks like it's got another one over there actually. Or should I just donate it and let somebody else find it? Let me know in the comments. On that note, hope you're having a wonderful day. If this was helpful for you, feel free to share it with a friend. Drop a like and subscribe, you know, all the YouTube stuff. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh, and just like a mini commotion for the shirt, because this is an awesome shirt that I found while I was thrifting. And you keep the best stuff for yourself. You always do. This is a vintage Winnie the Pooh shirt. And it says Pooh's Fruit Stand underneath. And it has all the characters. Very happy to have that one. So on that note, have a wonderful day. If you like the shirt, let me know. If you think I said something stupid, let me know. If there's something that you really like from what I showed today. Or maybe something that you think I shouldn't be buying anymore. Let me know. And let me know also what you think about that Nike Golf shirt. If I should just list it and disclose that it has the holes or if I should just donate it and let the next person get it. On that note, have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Peace.